If I were a fish, would you catch me? Asking for a friend. The friend is me. I need to know. So, what are we doing today? Um, we're suffering today. So, here's what we have currently. We have a game that you have one resource. That you spawn a creature. And you get a resource. Every second, you have a creature. So I have three, so I get three resources every second. And you can grab them and move them around, and they snap back to their original location. They also change size when you hover over them, and when you stop hovering over them. So there's a lot of like little stuffs added in here, but also I remember this took us like 30 minutes to figure out or something, how to resize the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and you can get up to 25 of them before it says you got none, stop doing that. So. What bait works on Zay? Um, pineapples. I'm already a fish. Someone throwing you at me. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's happening, I guess. <laughs> so, what we need to do, and this is this yesterday, or not yesterday, the last uh develop a do stream, we spent two hours following a six-minute long tutorial. It was a great time. Um, <laughs> and now we need to make it so that you can place a creature on a different tile. That is the current goal. That is all I want to do today. If I can do just that, I'm happy. The reason why I'm concerned that this is going to take a bit is, uh, let's talk a little bit on Godot stuffs. So... Just to catch everyone up to speed as to where my brain is and why I think this is this is going to be annoying to figure out. So we have this area, right? Just area zero. Um, it is set up so it can detect when there is like, you know, my cursor over it and when there's stuff over it. And I can do a thing called signals where like, what say the mouse is over it. And when the mouse is over it, say a thing or do a thing. So I can make it so that when the mouse is over it, it says, hey, there's some like just real quick. What's is there? Uh, is there something in here already? Is there already a creature in here? 
And that's awesome, right? It can send out signals whenever a mouse is over it. So the problem comes up when this is the thing that needs to read it. This thing needs to pick up the signal. Uh, the script in the creature needs to pick up the signal. That needs to hear that the tile has something in it. Okay? Now, that's not too terribly difficult if they were in the same scene. But I don't, because I have to spawn multiple creatures. I have to have this be its own scene so that I can spawn multiple in easier and make it not cause problems for, you know, uh, token generation and such. So I need to figure out how to make a signal emanating from this scene get read in this scene so that the script here can understand what's happening over here. And I, I know that there's a way to do it. I 100% know there's a way to do it. The problem is that this is one of those things where no one says what version of Godot they're on when they're talking about this and trying to solve this thing and try to explain how this thing works and not just linking the documentation and say, read up, idiot. And I'm like, I, I tried. I don't understand. That's why I'm here asking for help, right? So there's, so I'm getting to the point where it's like, this is one of those things where it's like, you know well enough, you read the documentation. You don't know well enough, you ask for help. But when you ask for help, they don't tell you how to, like, that it only works in the current version because there was a major update when they moved to 4.0, which is what I'm on, and stuff's from 3.0, and even, like, late 3.0 were very similar, but they were different. So, yeah, we're we're gonna have a time. Um, and I'm trying to stall because I just, oh, this is gonna be so much. No one's get no one wants the, the tortoise? Well, that's kind of rude. Tortoise actually a pretty good tortoise. Look at that turtle over there. That's actually a really good tortoise. All right. Um, so first things first, let's go into the area script. So currently we like made a function for when the mouse entered, which is quite literally just the thing that says, hey, there's something here. Else pass. <laughs> Dang it. Um, print. Um, I'm empty. Just lets us kind of test this. Oh wait, no, that's not in line. There we go. Oh, you know, I am a really good tortoise. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats on your new turtle friend. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, that turtle actually is a really, what well, at least was at the beginning of this last generation, I think it still is actually, uh, a really good Pokemon competitive. Like, I actually went out of my way and had to raise an entire box of those things so I can get the stats that I needed, and it fucking wrecked house. I loved it so much, that fucking turtle. I love that turtle. All right. So... Yeah, so function on mouse enter. Um, if global dot dragging and global is over here, so if dragging is false, which by default it is. Um, so if it's not dragging, then it doesn't do anything. So that just means it's not checking anything because we're not holding a item and moving it around. If we are holding an item and we hover over this, it should say fuck off I'm full or I'm empty. But the variable is, is currently set to is full. What we need to do is, is when a creature is set there, like placed there and is locked into that location, it should say is full. That's something that we're going to have to do because otherwise you can just put every single creature onto one tile and just keep stacking on that tile. And that's not the type of merger game we're trying to make here. So... Uh, now, now we're getting to the point where we need to detect when stuffs is placed in a spot. Also, Mervalian is trying to be really fucking cute right now. She's not trying to be. She is really fucking cute right now. She's just over there, just like cuddling up on the couch, like her her back feet. You no, know, no, we're turning on the fucking camera. Hold on. One second. Uh, 
Oh, I can't like preview it because it. Ah, oh, shoot. One second. Unlock that. Put that over. Okay, so we can kind of see now. Look at that cat. She's got she's she's got her beans up. She's just like cuddling over. She's being she's just she's just oh, oh stretchies stretchies. I would go and move that arm out of the way, but I fear I'd like wake her up or anything or something. Yeah, and you know she like basically lays in like the crook of that couch all the time. That is her favorite spot. I actually had to put a blanket down before because it was covered in cat hair and uh, I removed it and now she's right back. So, gonna have to clean the couch. <laughs> gonna have to de-cat hair the couch. But yeah, cat cam. All right, move that away for right now. I just I just had to show off the cat cam. All right. Also, you notice everything flashing? Yeah, me too. Still have to try and look into that. I think there was an update. I, uh, there, I think I have to do an update on my graphics drivers or something. I don't know. All right. Anyways, back to what we're doing. So yeah, function on mouse entered. Um, we want. Oh gosh. So, trying to think which direction I need to do. Do I have a script on the care on the creature that says it's hovering over something or do I have a script on the uh area that says I am being hovered over? Also, what's mouse shape entered? Maybe when the mouse's pointer enters any of this object shapes or moves from one shape to another. Shape, it's the child index and newly created shape 2D requires input pickable to be true and at least one collision layer bit to be set. Okay, that's fine. I don't think that's what I need here. Um, let's just see, make sure that this part works. Oh, because the function is not linked to a signal anymore. Why is that? There we go. Now it's linked. Now note, it's not saying anything. If global's dragging... Oh, just released. Oh, I have to release. Gee, who's this nerd? Oh my gee, who's this button? Oh, okay. So right now I'm doing on mouse enter, not if we're hovering over it. That's mildly annoying. I think I have to do input event, actually. Wait, nope, not in main. No, we want an input event in, in itself. Just copy all of this into here. All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, bud, howdy. Oh. Okay, so when I let go, I'm empty, I'm empty. I'm empty, I'm empty, okay. So yeah, that works. While that's smooth, what's smooth? Just like making you functions or something? I don't know. Um, so with this, I don't think we need something for when, oh, we'll need something for it later. We're gonna be putting a little ring around it. Your circles move when you move them. Oh, yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, currently we don't need this yet. So I'm actually just gonna remove this. I actually kind of want to make those things move a little bit faster, but I'll do that later. Right now, I just want to be able to see stuff. Um, Alright, 
So, this thing currently has no way to tell what's full. Oh, this is going to be such a pain in the ass. Um, so not only does this have to detect when you're hovering over something, it needs to detect when it's let go over something. And this just says that we're not tweening or dragging anything right now, so nothing is moving and nothing is being is being held. Um Okay. So now I have a basic understanding of what I'm trying to do. Uh how to make signal work between scenes Godot. It's from April 2020, so that's not going to work. That is absolutely a previous version. Godot 4. Okay, someone asked specifically how to do this in Godot 4. Boop -a -doop. Again, don't know how to make this white mode. Or dark mode. Sorry. Okay, so this guy has a key. When the player touches it, they want three things to happen. Key despawns, a sound plays, and a variable updates. If all keys are collected, door opens. Okay. This is a signal from Area 2D that's a collider for the key to the player. How do I format this? Area 2D, Area 2D, Area 2D, signal, get, called a wind note, it's a scene tree for the first time. Um, function on body, so just signal, is that just a thing? Like just emit signal, collect signal? Hold on, let's go to the Godot docs. Because if I can just say send out signal, receive signal, then that'd be perfect. Um, it appears as though there is. Oh, it's the wrong button there. Signals built in variant types represents the signal of an object instance. Like all variant types, it can be stored in variables and passed to functions. Signals allow all connected callables and by extension their respective objects to listen and react to events that directly referencing one another. This keeps code flexible and easier to manage. Easier signals being declared with the signal keyword. So signal attacked, signal item dropped, item name amount. Okay. So I can have this thing have a signal that's basically like signal uh oh my gosh signal like signal is full and in parentheses full comma like i guess i can actually i can write a lot of information in there can't i i can do how full it is what cell it is oh my god actually hold on one fucking second no this is probably going to be done in area Signal, uh, area info, right? And then in parentheses, we can put in what all, oh, whoops, what all we're going to need. So, uh, full creature, um, Okay, now let's do area creature, area full creature. And like, we're, I'm going to put a note down just so I can look back at this. Um, send out a signal saying what area this is, if it's full or not, and what creature is in it. Zero being empty if empty. <laughs> or we can actually... No, we don't even have to do that. We can just do zero... Well, no, no, no. We want to have a full check outright because the creature check is a later check. We, we, we can skip a lot of steps if we first know is it full or not. We could have a creature check be the full check by just saying creature is zero. There isn't a creature in here. But I feel like we don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, now how do we call... How do we, like, receive the signal? In, okay. K 
connect. Connects this signal to a specified callable. Optional flags may also be added to configure this connection behavior. You can provide additional arguments to the connected callable by using callable.bind. Signal can only be connected once to the same callable. The signal is already connected, returns global error invalid parameter, and pushes an error message. Unless signal is connected with object connect reference counted. To prevent this use is connected first, check for existing connections. Creator. Creator. Um. My, so hearing that, I'm mildly concerned that it's, um, that this is going to, uh, bah, 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 that I have to have these, like, signals be aware of what they're doing each time. Like, they have to connect and disconnect constantly. I'm a little worried about that. Oh, emit emits this signal. All callables connected to the signal will be triggered as it supports a variable. Okay, so I don't. Oh, is that going to work then? Because that'll trigger everything that's connected to it. We only want to trigger the thing that we're holding specifically. Um. Return, okay, get object is a thing. So returns the object emitting the signal. Get object ID. Boolean is connected. Boolean is null. Okay, I really feel like we can do this with signals. Sorry, I'm just like also reading through all the stuffs. Okay, so if we're dragging something and they... Re yeah, if they drag something and they release. Um, I guess we try and emit the signal. Actually, let's just hit play and see if this like crashes by just being a signal. Okay, the signal doesn't do anything just being here. That's totally fine by me. Um, yeah, so if we're dragging and we click. If is full is active, just say fuck off, I'm full. But we want to not print that. We actually want to send that to the the thing. Okay. So emit score sig signal area info zero full creature see we have to we have to set these variables so i guess it's not is full it's just is full creature oh wait no it would it just be emit underscore area info zero creature Oh yeah, and then creature is not currently declared, which is fine. Creature equals, we start with a zero because there's nothing in here. Oh, the variable. Variable creature equals zero. <sighs> Function emit area inf info not found in base self. What? Okay, so is it... Hmm. But we defined it up here. I wonder if it's because of the... I'm just going to remove this real quick and see what's going on. Okay, so emit area info is apparently not valid you're not allowed fitch i mean to be fair it's a love disc you're probably better off not having it love disc is it's a it's a love disc it exists for you to farm an item that benefits every other pokemon not even it you just get boxes of it and then get rid of it um
Okay. You want a fibs? Well, summon it yourself then. So, like their example here is like for button and button to get children. Button pressed connect. So they're connecting to unpressed bind button. And then in there. Yeah, and then they have a function for it here. So, do I just have the signal in this and then the callable is, and then I connect it on the, oh, maybe. Oh, you got the love disc, congrats. I mean, to be fair, it is one that you know for a fact you don't have yet, so it kind of makes sense. All right, um. Ooh. I, I, mm, it's like, so. Do I put... Uh, emit has to be in here. Is that emit underscore? It might just be emit dot. No. That's fine. It is definitely underscore. Emit signal. Am I just supposed to be doing... At least one verse received none. Am I supposed to do like... Area info. All right now I'm trying to figure out how the fuck I'm supposed to use this thing. Is full creature. Like how am I? Is it where's chat? Oh yeah, where's chat? What the hell? Um. No. Coding chat. Found it. I don't... Yeah. Y'all were very bad. I banned you, clearly. You've done your time, though. <laughs> How to emit signals Godot. Four. <laughs> Just fucking catches R and D on fire. God damn. Pretty fucking mean. Okay, and they do just like straight up functions like this. Connecting signal via code. There we go. Fix the signals via code instead of using the editor. This is necessary when you create notes and instantiate scenes inside of a script. Yep. You are fire. Y'all are fire. Y'all are just straight fire. All right. So, yeah, this person's just like making the thing real quick. No, we do operations connect the no connect the nodes via code. We reference the timer from the sprite to do call connect method timer's timeout signal. Connect this to your code, you need to call the connect method of the signal you want to listen to. Because you want to listen to the timer's timeout signal. Okay. Now if you want to connect to the signal and see instantiated, we do it using the node.ready built-in functions. Automatically by the engine when the code is fully instantiated. To give reference to a node relative to the current one, we use the method node get node. We can store that reference variable. Yep. Gay fire, let's be real here. Is that like rainbow fire? Oh, that sounds awesome. Can we get some rainbow fire? Get no blinking timer and I connect the third ready function. Timer get mode. Ah. So this is. So we're gra gathering the signals from the other things. Okay, so yeah, this thing has a custom signals thing. 
can provide custom signals to a script, for example, if you want to show game over screen when the player's health reaches zero. To do so, you can define the signal named. Okay, we're going to pull this over here. Fine, do chemistry. Okay, so this is like we have a signal diet or health depleted when the health reaches zero. Some sort of event just occurred. We generally use an action verb in the past tense in their names. Yeah, that's fire. Um, signals are same with built-in ones appear in the notes tab. You can connect them in. Oh, wait, what? Uh, to emit a signal in your scripts, call emit in the signal. Health underscore depleted dot emit. Oh, you do dot emit at the end. Then why the fuck void emit? Oh, is void mean we have to put it before then? So the emit is at the end? I guess that, okay. The option to clear one or more arguments, so the argument names between parentheses, signal helpful value, new value. Signal argument show up in the editor's node doc and go to the public. Which is how you can still emit any number of arguments when you emit signals up to you to emit the correct values. Um, function take damage amount. So this is like in your character function. It's like whenever you take damage, old health, health, health changed, emit, old health, comma, health. You give those signals and something sort of happens to them, like a button being pressed. Our nodes can emit individual signals and react to selected events. Signals have many uses. With them, you can react to a node entering or exiting the game world, to a collision of the character entering or leaving an area, an element interface changing size, and much more. Area 2 representing a coin emits body enter signal and replaces physics and body enter collision shape, allowing you know when the player collects it. Okay. Fun's gonna make dynamite. So yeah, they have, they generate the signal at the very top. They define the, their health amount, that's fine. Um, okay, so yeah, we have, oh, also variable area equals zero, because that is this area. This area is zero. We could even do like area zero info if we really need to, but let's see if we can't make this thing copy pasteable to all 25 instances of this. If that's the case, then I can probably get away with this in a smarter way if I can make this basically copy pasteable. Um, I say this, but like technically I have to make an, a variable for area, but it needs to be able to read the area it's in. So that's why we, I think it's better to have a variable. Um. Now, okay, so it's not emit signal, it's, what the fuck we call this? Area info dot emit, uh, area comma, is full comma, creature. Huh! And this, according to this, this should show up in here. It's not. Oh, it's on. It's in signals. Oh yeah, look at that. Variant is full variant. Area variant is full variant creature variant. Wow. Yeah, it's right there. So could I? I still can't connect this to the other scene, can I? So, mildly annoying that apparently I can't do it like this. But it emits this 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 signal, which let's just make sure it doesn't crash. Yeah, doesn't crash. So far, we're doing well. Oh, I know, because we're currently in the I'm empty thing. Which, actually no, we have to do it right here because we need this info before we print anything. Yeah, we have to do it right there because we need that signal. Okay. 
and it's not crashing it, although it does not like me holding it immediately after I press it, <laughs> but whatever. Okay, so it's able to define itself as full, it's able to define uh, it as a creature, it's able to say which area it is. Now we have to read that in the creature base, and the way that I'm understanding the signal system is we have to do a connect in the other thing. Um, so creature base. Uh, so we want to, when we are dragging it around, we need to have a function. Do we just have a function that just reads the thing? Like we could have it on entering an area if we're dragging it will grab all that info and then we can utilize that info like up here we might have to do it this way yeah so yeah if well no 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 we only if we're dragging it around which is up here if draggable if it's kind of being dragged or not yeah, so that's if it is currently being dragged. Oh my god. And... Oh, why'd I do it like that? We just need to do area. Yep, so whenever the... Yeah, whenever we hover over it with our mouse and let go... Which, actually, let's get this information whenever we hover over it, even. Because we need this info, like, whenever we're moving around the cursor to deposit it places. Like, when we're trying to move a creature everywhere. And if ever we're dragging a creature and we drag it over an area, then it tells us what area it is, if it's full, and if what the creature is in there. We need the, what the creature is for the merging aspect later on. Okay, so that makes sense. Now here's the pain in the ass part. We have to connect this function. We have to connect this, this. Um. And they have variable timer equals get no. Timer, timer, connect, one timer, timeout. Oof. Copy script path. Does this work? Um, can I just like... Nope. Really hoping I could do that. Alright, so when we're dragging this around, we need to collect the info whenever we hover over a thing. So what we do here is... Not timer, not timeout not connect we want to do area oh god those connection things want you to type out exactly explicitly where it's connecting from so it'd be like area zero dot connect oh um yeah i keep Thinking that's my tab system, but it's this. Uh, function on input events. That's that's the correct thing, but on input is not declared in the current scope. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Um, we could define that area, instead of like area zero connect, it's just area. And then we can define variable area equals area. I know it's not declared. Um, uh, how do we... We, 
Hmm. Whenever our cursor hovers over a thing, it sends out a signal. And that signal should carry with it all the information that's relevant. So we need to be able to pick up that information at any time in here. So this is like on in process, variable area equals area, which is completely incorrect. Um, but we need to connect it. Can I just read the signal without having to connect a specific thing? Because if I have to connect to a specific thing, I'm going to have a problem. Hmm. Alternate way of doing this. Uh, just put everything into a fucking array. Like all the signals, this, you know, each individual like box knows what it is and what's in it and what the creatures are and everything and all that jazz. I could just fucking make it an array, you know, just, just, you just you say like, oh yeah, area zero has creature zero in it, which means there's no creature in it. Boom, done. It's like, I, 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 ugh. I'm trying to think if that actually would be easier because I would store everything here. Well, no, I need to know how to connect different scenes. I, I, I can't try to think of this in a, in a different way, trying to skip the scene connection stuff. So we need to be able to connect scenes. Like, it. granted, there's a strong chance that this is not the correct way of doing this and that this is objectively awful. But I feel like I need to know how to do it. I am a ray. Use tape. Oh, it's going to be so much duct tape. You have no idea. Well, that just showed everything on my desktop for a split second. Like, there's nothing important on the desktop, but like, yeah, occasionally everything just uh, disappears. Like, it just, it just does not like Windows being on top of Windows sometimes. That's fun. Um... Okay, global dragging area info dot emit. I wonder if I can just have these be a constant emit. That would be real fucking problematic. It would be all 25 of them were constantly saying, hey, we got it. We the blank, blank, blank. You know, area zero has blank in it. That'd be really fucking stupid. Um, over speed, angular speed, equals pi function ready, variable timer equals get. Enough. Yeah, in this case, their functions, they actually grab the they have to connect to specific nodes uh hmm i really fucking wish that i can just on area zero area info like, receiver method, maybe I can just copy-paste that in there? I Again, I really wish I can just go to the other scene in here. I, I, if it's, like, it seems really weird to me. It feels like it's not possible because they don't want you to do, be able to do so here. I don't know. Oh, we can even make it a one-shot. That's interesting. Oh, that could be really useful. Knowing that it could be set as a one-shot. What does that give us as the thing? It doesn't do anything. It's not any different. Why? Hmm. Yeah, because, you know, oh, theoretically, I can go over to the creature and be like, oh, yeah, if we're dragging over it, like, going back to the signal thing. Yeah, the desktop. It does not only flash for like a second. It's fine.
Well, there is a object thing, like get object. But there's no side effects. It doesn't modify any of the member variables. So like, does it have to say what it is then? Like, God, I keep doing this. Can I fix out of this? Is this gonna fuck everything up? You don't need creature base right now? Open scene? Okay, sweet, I can pull it up anytime. Oh, thank God. Can you get spiky isopods? Which spiky isopods? Isn't there a good handful of those? Okay. Um. Sorry, um. Yeah, so on area zero, area, underscore area info. Uh, what we could do, because Object get object, the object emitting the signal. Fine, you're gonna have to sh tell me which one it is before I can answer that. Area info dot emit area. Uh, area is full creature. We're actually gonna print these as well. Let's just see if this is even working. Well, no, we need... Yeah, no, those are working. The fuck? Here's a spiky ice pods for Antibo. Uh, I'm... Spiky isopods. Oh, yeah, those are really cute. Oh, my gosh, those are actually really fucking cute. Isopods them little guys I don't think that I could have these in the terrarium with the dart frogs uh clearly because the spikes are there to deter predators and I don't want to accidentally harm the dart frogs uh but honestly I have enough glass to make a little tiny enclosure for just like on the desk I spot terrarium. Yep, I spot terrarium could absolutely exist. Like genuinely, I know that isopods only need like, you could get away with like a one gallon tank for them, but obviously that's very small. Uh, it's much more comfortable with a two gallon or up to like five gallon, but if it's gonna be desktop, you know, gonna be a thing. But yeah, I know that you can absolutely, that's absolutely doable. Have you looked up rubber ducky isopods? That shit's adorable. All right, so it, we might not need to even emit the area because we can just read what the uh what the thing is. Actually, wait, area emit. Do we need Yeah, I want to emit those variables. Uh, yeah, I'll pull them up. Uh, these are rubber ducky isopods. They're like, they're still fairly new. But they're called rubber duckies for obvious reasons. Their face look like a little rubber ducks. They're also stupidly expensive and very hard to breed, apparently. Like, each isopod can be, like, $20 sometimes, and you need, like, a pack of, like, 20 in order to have a somewhat stable colony. Like, they're long-lived and everything, so it's not really the end of the world if you can't really get them to breed, but it's, like, it's really hard to breed them in captivity, apparently. So it's, like... Ah, oh, but they're so fucking cute. And there's even blondes, too. It's, like, I would love to have rubber duckies. Alright, uh, shit, where was I? <laughs> so, I'm just gonna look up. Can 
I read a signal without connecting it? Godot 4. I thought you little guys. Using the signal. Okay, this actually has like kind of a full guide of almost exactly what I'm looking for. Holy shit. Yeah, the big ones are just chunk. Uh, when signal is made by node, signal and satch data are captured by a centralized meshing system. Meshing system can be put, then push the signal along with its data. All the nodes connected to that specific signal. Then triggers the method in the receiving node, which then performs some action in response. So I do have to connect it. Select source node, duh, 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 open the node pane. Okay, this is through the Godot editor, which we can't do. <sighs> um, touching the unique area to the body and to signal. Yep. Kind of signals using a script. Script. Yep. Uh, create a script for the target node, the node that will receive the signal. The script create a method that includes the required behavior of the target node once signal is received. A reference to the source node, and we'll emit the signal by using git node method. Ooh! See, now we have a problem because we can't. There's 25 different things that will be sending out these signals, and we have to do git node and then specify which node it is. That's not gonna work. Could we get away with putting this in grid? No, because area zero, like these areas need to tell if they specifically are full. Ah, oh, why does this have to be so difficult? Uh. Um. Okay. Uh, the built-in body entered signal, area 2 d signal, the body entered signal is called another body collides with an area 2D node, the signal handles the method because you're playing bone and puts dash on. Unready variable enemy node, area 2D equals get node enemy. Yep. And that's where the problem is, is that we would have to get every single node and define them initially, but that's not going to work. Um what I could do. So we already have global, right? Where it just says, hey, are you dragging something? Hey, are we tweening something? We could have variable area just, uh, whoop, equals zero to start. Fair is full. We'll just say yes. That we don't have to do that then. Uh, and then variable for creature. We initialize that at zero, if I can learn to type. And then we could receive the information emitted from this and say, hey, this is the area, this is the stuffs, and then all that the this guy has to do is just reference that information. So let's say like area zero, it emits if it's full and that it's and what creature it is whenever we hover over it. Then in global, we connect to it. Um, oh fuck, we still have to get node though. Oh my god. I guess we don't have to do a signal then, do we? But I need to learn signals, but apparently signals just don't seem like they're going to work here. Because everything I can find says that we have to find the exact node that is emitting the signal. And I know, like, we did this earlier where it, uh, in one of these, it is earlier where it's able to, like, you know, find, uh, a unknown and it's able to fill that in correctly and everything. But this, in order for this to work, it is in the same area that this is found. It's in main. 
so it can just find area zero directly. But in order to connect between scenes, I need signals. So I can't tell it, hey, yo, bitch, fucking find me. It's it's like trying to call someone to give, uh, what was it? It's like having to call someone to give them your fucking phone number, but they don't pick it up unless they know the number. That's kind of the problem here. Is that I, I need it to hear what Area Zero is telling it to say, but Creature One does not under- it will not pick up the call unless it knows that Area Zero is trying to call it. It's a plant! Get it! Whew. Yeah, so that's why I was considering it just to push the information up into this, which I suppose I could do without the signals at all. So we get rid of the signals, we get rid of this. Global dot uh, area equals zero, because that's what this one is, is our current area. Global dot is full equals is full. The current is full that we have here. Global dot creature equals creature. So this just puts information up into the global uh, nodes, that, uh, the global thing that we have that just says, hey, what area we're having over? Is it full? Is it what creature is in it? That's all it's looking for. Okay. Jesus Christ, this is going to be a fucking mess. So, this whole very old creature is zero. Honestly, the more I think about this, the more I think we can just remove is full. Because we could just use creature zero as it being full, honestly. If creature is zero. Really? Oh my god. If creature... Fine. If there isn't a cre... If creature is, is not a zero, then fuck off, I'm full. Um, and I want to make sure that this actually uses the variable. Not just the word- oh, no, because to do the word creature, I have to put it in quote. Well, and you gotta plan it. How's that make you feel? Yeah, so if there- if the creature value is not zero, fuck off, I'm full. Else, I'm empty. And this goes up, tells global, get rid of his full. Powerful! Yay, you are powerful, bun. Okay, so I believe this should work. Now, in here, we have to know when we're moving around a, like, an item. Um, if draggable is currently being dragged or not. So, this will read... Whenever we hover over a thing, global dot. Oh my gosh, what am I trying to think of? Global dot creature and. Actually, global dot area. It'll get what area it is and if there's a creature in there and what the creature is. So now it grabs this information. <laughs> Do I have to actually declare these as variables? <laughs> yeah, figured. Alright, so yeah, it should be able to read this information. And then we can use these. <laughs> uh, if action is pressed... 
and this gets the uh yeah this gets this information out of it i yeah sorry i'm just like thinking through this as well so if input action just press that's when we click on it and then we can start to move move it around uh, it saves its initial position. Global dragon equals true. Since the global dragon is aware multiple steps at a time, that's fine. Yeah, let's just make sure it doesn't crash when I grab it. Sweet. Just making sure that like global area and global creature didn't fuck up. And thankfully, this is only running if we are dragging things. Yep. Yeah. So. Now we have to see when we let go. If over empty area is over empty area replaced. So this is what we're probably gonna be replacing with instead of over empty area, it's global dot creature. Yes. If global dot creature This is over an empty area, so if there is no creature in the location that we're currently hovering over, then it will place it there. We need to update... Oh god, we have to update the array too. Fuck! Hold on. Where's my notes? So it's an installer for something. Pull up my to-do list. Update the creature to the array when placed in an empty area. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's going to be a fucking pain in the ass. All right, so yeah, this puts it into the new area. It says that it's done. And what I want to do, yep, yeah, a global creature. Oh, yeah, this doesn't care where it is. This does not care where it is. Um, we need an else if for if it's a different shape, but I'll add that in later. I'm actually... Yeah, no, we'll do that later. Right now we're just trying to pick stuff up and put them in an empty frame. That's all we fucking care about. I'm not adding notes in for future shit. Not right now. Okay. So yeah, so if there's nothing there, it puts it in the location. Now we need to update the array in main. So for the array, we need to find the grid space that it was originally, which we got that from the script for area zero. Since we have the script for area zero, again, that thing sends out what area it is, but if we hover it over, let's say area five, it will say, hey, the last recorded thing in it, since we're dragging when we let go and everything, that'll say area five and it'll be locked in at area five and only changes when you let go, when you are dragging. So that means it won't change when we hover over a bunch of other shit randomly. It'll only change when we're letting go at a location. So yeah, so it lets go on that spot. We can change our position, note that position, spawn creature at node, add Grid array index. My location with index and the grid array changes it to a one. So grid array dot in uh, grid array index and index is where in the array is zero is and save it to the index variable. Zero. So this is finding the zero in grid array. So we need to read the grid array and change that thing. <laughs> oh, I feel like we need a resource manager, global, and a creature manager. <laughs> at this point because we're going to need 
a, we're going to need information on every sing on every single frame, well, not every single frame, but every single uh, different cell. Because it, it's more so that we have to store the information constantly. Um. Oh, it flashed again. Don't know if y'all saw that. crash y'all was that a crash Let's do this again uh, inspector script empty what what the fuck is happening invalid get index position on base nil So, because global, yeah, put it there. Ah! Can it not place it on the thing? Ah, okay. So, we have like this draggable thing, like, is the item able to be dragged over into your body graph? Oh no, uh, we need to go back to main. Holding! Holding we need to get rid of. I saw that holding was a here, was here thing, and that's not a good thing. Because dragging is currently it instead. So global dot dragging. Let's just see what happens. Still failed. Sweet. Why did this fail? Yo, let's continue working on this before I try and fix this esoteric bug. Let's just make sure it's not failing whenever I let go anyways, not just over the button. Okay, it's failing whenever I let go anyways. Got it. Got it. Uh... Global.dragging. Global.creature. Aha! So currently creature is currently creature is zero, but it actually needs to be like a fucking not zero, because it's trying to place it on a location that doesn't exist. It's trying to place it anywhere. Because it doesn't understand any of the other locations. Because that's why it always goes back to the original location. Okay, that should work. That should fix itself once we get the other scripting things done for all the other all the other areas so right now it won't work until i get this coding put in everywhere else because now we're trying to understand where other things are and where we can, where's the valid spot we can put things okay so we need to change the array because <laughs> we need to know which areas are valid locations to put a creature on because right now, it only updates it when we generate a new creature. Which, that's that's not good, because if we move a creature from location 3 up to location 20, and then spawn a new creature, it thinks that 3 is still full. So we could just do... Uh, this is where a signal might actually work. We could actually send out a signal to main and say, hey, buddy, update your fucking grid array. Function move creature. Okay. Um, we need to, since we have index equals grid array, find zero. So that's where the zero is, but we need to find uh global dot area 
fair index equals grid array dot find a uh, global dot area. So that should find that where that is in in it and saves it to the index variable. And now that we have the index variable for that grid array location, uh, grid array index equals one. Yeah, it should just be grid array index equals zero then, huh? That should tell that to not... <laughs> so whenever we trigger the move creature, it should save whatever is actually yeah do we even have to do you even have to do this at this point we could just do index a grid array global dot area because that's all we're doing here we don't have to call index again uh yeah, what information do we store in here? We store what the current creature is. Which means we will... Yep, no, we do actually have to do the index style for this. We do have to do index. Index... Or... You know, uh... Fair... Index... Equals... Ah! Global dot... Or... Ah! grid array dot not index dot find in parentheses global dot area so this finds out what the area is and then this is index actually we don't want to change it to the no this just checks see if there's something there or not Dewblade, it's two swords! I like I can't even hit play and run this yet until I fix, until I get this whole portion done. I'm like, I have to go to the next safe, like the next safe point, basically. All right, yeah, so index is mm -hmm. array dot find global dot array, or global dot area which should be this and this should be updated whenever creature is being held ah currently we do not update this area zero should be oh no we do we do we have to get right here creature equals creature that is that yep 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 yep, yep. currently variable creature equals zero and then this has to, yep, main has to now change the information in it to be, okay. Um, get node. But what we need is, oh, we need that previous one, fuck. Node path. No, get node node path. Yeah, we actually need to get a different node path. Uh, Gunny! Uh... It's going! Savern save the game? Yeah. So, currently, we're having a time with, uh, signals. And, to my knowledge, me not able to use signals in the way that I want to. Uh, or in the way I thought they worked initially. Uh, and I'm trying to find workarounds to not have to have signals emitted and received 25 times every time a signal is needed. <laughs> so that's what's happening currently. Like right now we're, I think I'm nearing the end of being able to place a creature in a different location. That, that, that's where I'm at. Yay. Yay. Alright, so yeah, grid array, find global area. Uh, waka waka! I feel it. 
I feel it. Alright, uh, great, one, find zero, great, zero. So we have to find, well, no, yeah, we're not trying to find global area. We're trying to find, I don't know, we're trying to go up in it a certain amount. Fuck. Uh, index, find zero. Yeah, no, 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 not that, not that. We actually do want grid dot array. Not grid, oh my fucking god. Ah! Global dot, not even array, global dot area. And we set that value to zero. Yeah, inside the grid array, we look for wherever this is, in this case it's zero, and we say, hey yo, make that bitch zero, because it's now empty. Which actually, no. We could, instead of making, yeah, we can just use the grid array to just say, hey, that thing has that creature in it. Like that, that spot has like a five in it. Because we're already using a zero to represent that there isn't a, isn't anything there. And it already looks for zero to look wherever an empty space is. You know, shower uh, after working out, eating brunch. Ooh, okay. I wish you luck. Get clean, do all your stuffs. And this just spawns a one because this is the first tier of creature it even can spawn, is we're spawning a one. And it costs one to spawn it. We only spawn a one. And whenever we move a creature, so now we have to emit a signal that main receives for editing this. I have a strong feeling that this game is tossing you to a rock tumbler and you're going to come out smooth brain. You're hitting so many new things at once and learning architecture paradigms or how to code complex systems. I remember learning like this. I wrote awful stuff but like so much made you look at others' code and learn architecture paradigms. You're about to make new progress. Yay! Howdy, goals. Like, I feel like I'm learning a lot. Uh. Signals are kind of annoying, though. <laughs> signals are kind of annoying. Um, that, like, this is definitely one of those cases where I feel like as a beginner, I am clearly not understanding the full breadth of why it's not like this, but I can connect signals between different scenes. So like I have a scene for the creatures, right? This is a different scene. Um, like I can connect signals between these. I, I have done so. Uh, but whenever I go to connect a signal, I can't connect to another scene. There is not an option to do so here. I have to do it through code. And that part is really annoying. Because it's also like, it, it's just, like, give, get, let, let me. <laughs> yeah, so like, I'm gonna have to call this function in another thing, which I guess that's not really a signal per se, it kind of is. Oh, you can film the code concepts. Once you learn code concepts, you can read others' codes and learn code design paragraphs. And because right now you're going in raw brains and we own code designs as you learn. Yep. I don't know enough to know. I don't know enough to know what I don't know is basically where I'm at. And as I learn more of what I don't know, I can better understand what other people know and what other people are doing and understand how they're implementing the things that I was attempting to implement. And let's admit, probably failed. Um. All right, so. Whenever we let go of this, we want to change that fucking thing. Yeah, we want to change this. We want to trigger this bitch. We're learning this bitch. <laughs> so, uh, if it's over an empty area, we put it there. So we're now valid. Let's move back to the first spot. Okay. So, we want to change global.area and global.creature to the new location which should actually be yeah we don't need global that area here at all we just need to know if there's a creature there we don't care strictly speak why do you have a creature there we call it right here it's fine i'm trying to learn okay global that creature is over the area put it there 
So yeah, we drop it here and we want to change in main, we want to trigger move creature, which will set the global area. Yeah, it'll in the spot with the area we are last hovered over, it will set the creature that we are currently using. Currently, we don't have a thing that changes the creature that we're currently using, but that's something we're going to be adding in later on. That's fine. Uh, oh, fuck. We need to get the previous location, though. Fuck. Fuck de fuck. Because we have to set the previous location to a zero because it's no longer being used. Uh, let's trigger this first and then I'll figure that out. One thing at a time, Zay. One thing at a time, all right? Let's fucking one thing at a time. Okay. This... Oh, fuck. How do I call... Yeah, get node root resource manager. Okay, so what we need is... Not resource manager. Actually, no, we don't even... Um... Those root, not resource manager. Oh. Oh yeah, that's right. That's the thing up here. Huh. Do I even need to do that? Because we're only calling it once. Yeah, we only call this once. We only. We only call that once. Yeah, we get. Well, we don't need resource manager. We actually need main. I'm sad you're not stressing any code paradigms because you're 100 miles south and my advice would move you north unless something simple as possible, like early, early outs lesson. Yep. You yeah, know, if there's like, hey, before you jump into that river and try to swim across a raging torrent, there's a bridge to the left. Like that level is like, yeah, fucking correct me. But if it's like, eh, a little bit of water won't hurt him, then fucking let me swim. <laughs> All right, so root slash main, which I believe should be this actually. Uh, what is zero zero main that should be copy path. Yeah, that should be fine. Tucker MCNA, thank you for the follow. Shark learning to swim. Yep, watching from the bridge. Oh, I figured. I figured there's a really easy way of doing this. Like I can feel it in my bones. There's an easier way of doing what I want to do here. But I don't listen to bones. I'm a crazy man. All right, so yeah, we get this node. Um, and while we have this node, fuck. How how do I utilize this? I just realized because the only way I know how to utilize this is like here. It's like resource manager dot blank 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 which isn't really much of a thing. Wouldn't it be... One second, I'm just gonna check a thing. Main dot... Oh yeah, look at that. Um... Creature remover. That's not working, is it? Oh, it's also, it's a move creature. Uh, no, cool. Okay, well. I'm actually kind of curious. Can I just copy path? Because if I only need to call this once, I don't see the need. Yeah. It's It just is kind of annoying to have to try to declare all these things. I guess I'll just have to declare main as a variable. Probably annoying. Say as much in case it helps. You're deep in an area of reacting to everything where you need it. Something to consider storing information for later, doing the heavy lifting in smaller compartments than using the stored information elsewhere abstraction and calculation. We actually started doing that. We have a, a thing that's just holding certain informations uh, as needed up here for other things to call. And I was considering even like moving like the array up here and moving um, a couple other handful of things up here, which quite frankly, is probably just going to be the most important stuff because uh, so many things have to call this. And like, you know, obviously we have a thing that just handles the resources. Um, yep, tiptoeing into it. The problem is, is that I'm uh, so far in 
to my current system that rewriting it all to reference up here you know tech debt i'm at i'm in tech debt for it and it's like i just kind of want to see if i can make this work now in my defense i genuinely thought that i could have this creature tell the area hey update your shit and the area can handle shit itself my idea of encapsulation is that the this air like you know the script for this area itself will save relevant information for other things to call on later i wanted it to be basically this big and there's just 25 different scripts of that sure that's 25 different scripts but it's 25 different scripts of basically nothing and it's like that in my head made a lot of sense but now i'm learning that in order to do a signal call i have to know what's where I'm calling it from. Oh, really? Okay, hey, Gunny, you wanna have some fun? It's like, I can, but like, you know, bun with a bat. Bun with a bat? Gunny with a bat. I had alliteration and I like the idea of bun with a bat now. Anyways. Oh, only two. Okay. Bunny with a bat. Really? So many people calling your PNG a rabbit? That's weird. My premium price is for... Yeah, no. I don't get those low-quality viewers. I pay the big bucks. I just draw art for people, and that gets, that gets me more viewers. <laughs> but yeah. The thing with the signals is that... I can't have a signal between the different scenes that just does the stuffs I needed to do. Da, da, da. Uh, so clearly you need to update the uh, PNG tuber. So you, oh gosh, um, now that uh, Reacts has the deafened and muted things, when muted, you should cover your mouth so everyone sees the fingers and the wings. And that will help for whenever you have to mute yourself. Um, and I don't know what about Deafen, like covering up the ears. Oh, there's been uptick in bots recently. Don't think the has been stamped. Um, the reason why there's been uptick in bots is because that's just the dev cycle for bots and banning them. Uh, whenever the bot programmers, whatever, find a new avenue to send out the spam bots, they take that avenue and that avenue will work for like a few weeks. And then while it is going, the Twitch devs are finding the solution to it. Once they find the solution, they wait a little bit and then they put, implement the fix and stops them from being able to, uh, to do the thing. So yeah, as Bun says, it comes in waves. It'll it'll happen for a while and it'll disappear for a couple months. It'll happen for a while, disappear for a couple months. It's the cycle of this stuff, unfortunately. But I'm certain that they're finding a solution to it. We just have to ban them and ignore them. All right. Anyways, yeah. So we want to call the move creature function. Um, in here, variable main. Yeah. Variable main. Uh, and then at ready. I think you put this underneath this. Get node. I'll say this because it might spark understanding you rarely want you rarely want the many objects to do global state work that's simply the job of a manager a single global manager it stores state that the many then reference as needed or the manager has the job of calling the methods of the one thing that should be processing rather than each of the many doing it each frame so um that was that's actually something that uh that i was trying to do 
Granted, I feel like I can probably put a good bit of... No, no, I can't put this in this stuff because we have to understand what we're grabbing. Specifically. Either way. That was actually uh, a thing that I was considering doing. The... Uh, things like area isn't doing constant checks. Um, the creature is only doing constant checks, but it's only checking one thing and then it's just stopping. Like, global's not doing constant checks. Main is doing checks, but that's because it's... Actually, no, it's not doing constant checks on main. Huh. Look at that. But yeah, it's like, really not many things are calling constant stuffs. And I want to make area one not calling things constantly. And it's not. It's only calling stuffs when I'm hovering over the different items. I'm actually storing all of the information of like what the last creature was up here. Resource manager. The only thing that's really being stored elsewhere is in main, we have the grid array and that's it. While grid array is here uh like theoretically i could move this up into global but again i want to see how far i get and then we'll remake it entirely we'll make the premiere version of the merger game is there anything for a promotion i wish you luck let's talk about the bot stuffs think you can do better bots dio oh no oh god imagine just like twitch bots but all they do is just squeak in chat that's it they don't like try to promo like a website they don't try to scam anyone it's just squeaks oh me meaning needing manager oh i've needed a manager for years like i have genuinely needed a manager and like a community manager for fucking years i need a video editor i need a community manager <laughs> um uh, one manager handling input and finding which area is currently being dragged and it tells that that one is being dragged. Yeah, yeah, I'm certain that there's a smarter way for me to be doing this as well, Gunning. And yeah, I know that you haven't seen all the all the stream stuffs. So, yeah, grain of salt. That's why I'm trying to also explain what I'm doing and at least my thought process. Try uh, Basically, I'm trying to look for justification and be like, you know what, Zay, you are doing that right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get to feel good. But no, no, I don't get to feel good. All right, uh, fuck, what was I doing? I got I got distracted by bots. Oh yeah, main, get root main, and now we look for main.move creature, and that should update that we have a creature. Yeah, that should update this. Let's just see if this works. Nope, main.move creature, yep. Null instance of a null instance. Um, let's get node. Oh, is that gonna have to be a fucking signal? Oh, I really don't want to have to make this a fucking signal. <laughs> but I might have to make this a fucking signal. I need to learn signals. I'm going to do a signal. Pulling up the signal thing. Um. Wait, no, but we have 25 instances of creature one. We can't do a signal. Fuck. This thing. Uh, OP. Oh my God. Object oriented programming. Didn't know that member variables existed each object was an array and i document tracking each index and whatever was in index like yeah I, it, I was like index five was help oh my god so it feels happy button coming cause chaos i get my payback when i get the taser that 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 stream yesterday was so fucking good like my face hurt Uh, I mean, it's like, I really feel like that should work. One second. Copy script path. Let's just fucking copy script path and see if that actually works. That'd be really funny. It's not gonna work. Yep. You can taste non stop while charging? Noted. There's really need Drop, pick it up again, it seems patched. Okay. Sweet. All 
Okay, so yeah, it doesn't understand this. That's fucking annoying. Okay, so global resource manager. So be creature base. I'm sorry, it'd be main dot. It'd be main dot main, wouldn't it? Slash root slash main dot main. Be like enabling. Okay. process errors node not found main absolute path attempted from root main creature one. Oh, we aren't in creature one we need to go up another one also main is with a capital m got it yeah i did i did a capital m fuck me Keep that capital in there um Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't know that that's how this fucking order worked. Holy shit balls. Huh. So wait, if I just have to go up one level, can't I just do that? Can't I just like go up one level? See, this organization structure is honestly almost more annoying because it's like, yeah, on the local we have this and then we go to remote and it's like, yeah, there's creature one. Yeah, I remember the note thing you talked about before. I knew there was like, parents basically I'll just see if that fucking works okay now we're at the point where theoretically I just have to copy this script into all of the other areas theoretically And this little creature is zero and area is a one. All right, now let's just see if this works at all. Nope. Like dot and dot dot user concepts across most languages operating systems. E.g. the CD change directory command in Windows can parse that and dot that too for full time navigation. That's actually kind of neat. All right. Uh, invalid get index position on base nil. So, this needs to get the position of the new area. It worked. It did the move creature thing. That's nice. And position. Yep. Is the. Yeah, okay. So, position is where we are currently. You have ice cream? Ice cream? Why is that not working now? Because tween property, it's modifying itself. And it's saying from where I am right now to the new position. Is it because I didn't say what this is? Can I just... This is not going to work, is it? No, it's giving me a fucking error. My path puts vector two. One second. Argument between property function argument two should be node path, but it's vector two. Okay. Fuck. I'm screen. We have inchworm. 
It's like, it. this was working before, actually. That's kind of odd. gonna try real quick over the area and just see if that works real quick okay so that is always false so it can never do this and then if global dot creature because that's what we're using and again double checking yep so if we do estimation my global dot creature Howdy. Yep, and that's when it fails. <sighs> Alright, so if global... Yeah, so it's only failing because it's hitting that... Whoop. That position. What happens if I just change the global? Like, I'm genuinely curious. Nope, oh, fails again. Ah, still doesn't know what this is. God damn it. Body underscore ref dot position. Wait. Oh, because I never set what the initial position was. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Okay. Like body ref underscore position. I believe that's actually a thing it wants to have in here. Which is we're basically not doing because of my system. Initialization bites in mini programs. Welcome to Struggle Town Population. Me. I'm the bus driver of the struggle bus. Alright, so yeah. Body ref up position. Okay, so it's trying to find the location of the new spot. Which oh god. I, oh god. How do I get that? I guess I can put that in global as well, like previous location, new location. I guess, like that's, ooh. Like I know I'm gonna need to get previous and new as well. Oh my god. Uh, so what the area is and what the previous position was. Okay. So like when we grab, oh my god, where, where was I, creature? Yeah, so when we grab it, we need to set initial position. Let's just, we can use global for that because that's what the previous position was is that what i named that yeah it was position so now we're saving to the global position thing what our current position is um Global dragon is true. Okay, and now. Oh god, we need to. Okay, so we save our currently is our previous position. That's good where we're saving our previous position. And this is trying to find the new position. Oh, for fuck's sakes, which means that whenever we hover over a thing, we need to collect the position of the area that we're currently hovering over. Okay. Um, your position. Fuck it. <laughs> Variable. New. Position. 
Fuck it. Just make another variable. Global dots new underscore position equals position. So it's just saying, here's where I am right now. And I need you. Yeah, and it should be, we should be able to grab that here. So this is where I am right now. And this should be where the previous position is. No, this is the new one. Yeah, this is the new position. Global dot new position. Well, then it crash. That's something. We we take our victories as we can. Um, so it's not setting it to the new thing. So if global underscore creature it doesn't equal zero. Wait. Global creature doesn't equal zero. This should be if it equals zero. Yeah. No, if it doesn't equal zero, then it places it there. Oh! Well, that's a new one. All right. So this should be... If I'm dragging it, it should be grabbing the position right here and say go there but it's not it's putting me way the fuck up here uh because we had this issue before where it was trying to place them in the wrong area um global new position set ease out uh scale vector to global position Also, there's a chance that this isn't even triggering either. Like, this isn't firing correctly. There's a chance I didn't define the areas correctly. Uh, let's take a quick look. What is the position? It is 80 by 89. So, what I want to do is in global... Uh, oh my god, what was, what's the setting for process? Yeah, it's process delta. We're just going to real quick... Uh, print new position should be going constantly null okay now it has a new position but note it only has this position but it still puts it up here so it puts it up in the top left corner at zero zero not 2089 And oh, wait, does it even is it even able to set it in? No, it doesn't even set it up there anymore. Yeah, if it's a zero, then we set it to a new position. If it's over a non-valid, then we bring it back to the original spot. So it's trying to say that we are in a valid area. I kind of wish I could have these be constantly visible, honestly. Like, I would love to just see these. Asset library. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the new position. Let's also print out um, previous position, comma, new position. Null, null. So it doesn't have any positions yet. The moment I grab something, though, 2089. Both of them are 2089. 2089 is apparently up in the fucking corner. Um, yeah, and they're both trying to say the position is the first location, not the new one. It would help if I have global area equals one. Um, creature, new position, 
position. Got the IT stuff. Got yeah, stuff done. Arrange for class next semester for in English. I wish you all the fucking luck. That sounds awesome. Making progress. You're doing it. All right. Uh, variable creature zero because yeah, we currently don't have a creature in this location. We'll we change this whenever it's needed. Yeah, no, we change it whenever it's needed. If we're dragging something and hover over it, it says, hey, here's where you are right now, the new position equals position, which should just be this. And it didn't even fucking copy that correctly. Yeah, well, that, that should fucking work. But it's giving us just the location of area zero. Um, it's not. Yeah, the previous position should be 2089, but the new one should be this. Should be the position here. And if position is 8089, why is that still giving us 2089? Group position, comma, B position. Let's just see. Print uh, area, comma, or previous area, comma. Yeah, whatever. Prev area, comma, area. Is that giving me the same information as well? Null and zero. Why is previous area giving me null? Okay, well that's part of the problem here. Did I not define the previous area? <laughs> like, that might help. Like, strictly speaking, we don't use that information yet. So actually, yeah, no, that's not fixing the problem. Well, like, the previous area, it's not actually a relevant bit of information yet. We're not... It doesn't... Yeah, and the area we were coming from was area zero. So... Wait, no. Previous area was zero area... Yeah, that should actually be, that should have a, and then the area that we're hovering over should be the new variable area. So that zero should be updating to a one whenever we hover over the new location. We're dragging, global dragging, and one shape, one here, and if we release, about creature it's full Oof. it's likely applies for later rewrite just because relevant lesson right now instead of tracking all this in the creature do the ui work elsewhere and tell creatures to move and they and and they do so that way you have a move to method that the ui manager can call on a creature when moving it to benefit the benefit here is that anything can tell a creature to move and all the cr creature code needs to do is move and remember where it was slash is while moving Exception to this is that the future merge with function on the creature can call move to on its own, setting a then merge boolean, then move to, uh, when and when move to ends, it tells the target to upgrade, then it kills itself. That's rude. Don't tell targets to kill themselves. Fucking ban this bat. Um. Ah, this is a fucking. Attached to a oh god damn it I forgot I need to fuck mm. All right now it actually can send out a fucking signal Yay it works well Works in the loose sense But it, it does say that this is area one 
Okay, something. But yeah, that would make more sense. <laughs> Okay, so now we need to figure out why it's yeeting itself up into the top left corner. Love writing code that reads as unethical. Favorite is hierarchy management, like writing code that kills children or orphans them. Maybe being kill your children or adopt their children as your own. Oh, uh, that's, that's kind of dark and super funny. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, why is this global.new position? Because that's clearly the new position. But it's yeeting it up in the top left corner. And like... Yeah, new position should be... It should be setting it to new position. Because it's like, kill yourself if you have no children. <laughs> Don't worry, I got Nugget. Like, that's dark, but that is funny. Because, like, it sounds so horrible, but genuinely, that is the terminology used in coding, and it just unintentionally sounds awful. Like, you know, when you... When you directly use it as well, it's a thing, but I mean... Alright, shit. Um... Stuff. Okay, I'm gonna double check what the tween properties stuffs is saying. Contract scale, color vectors, be free. Uh, it's trying to get new position as a vector. Is? Yeah, that is saving as a vector. Yeah, so that should be working. Well, it's not saying vector 2, it's just saying the coordinates. I wonder if I actually have to explicitly tell it that this is a vector 2. As for slave and like, though, it's only funny it doesn't involve protected characteristics. Honestly, I don't think I've really ever heard, like, master-slave terminology, like, in so freaking long. Like, that's, like, I've heard that when people were just talking about how, like, oh, yeah, we used to call them things like this. It's like, oof. Okay, uh, initial position is vector two. Uh, I wonder if I do global... That definitely did not work. Still gonna keep the vector twos in there though, because that's good for me to know that that's supposed to be a vector. It's like global new position. This genuinely everything I'm seeing here. Yeah, everything I'm seeing here is saying that this should be working. But it's just sending it to zero, zero. <laughs> I say you've been a common tech term for a long time to describe ownership and intentions of something. The tech industry is slowly facing the mouth, though. Obvious reasons. Our studio actually blocks code submits that use such terms, encouraging more accurate descriptive alternatives like primary, secondary, manager, and client. Yep. Yeah, it just... It just... Yeah, it just feels bad to use that one. So yeah, good. Um, currently, I'm trying to figure out why this is not accepting this as the correct location. Because it also is setting us back to zero, zero, even with initial position. Because when I move it, it's going all the way up there instead of these coordinates. So, like, even initial position is not working correctly. 
like initial well that's over if it's a non-valid location theoretically everywhere is a valid location currently hmm Those times where I genuinely think that redoing this from the ground up would make more sense. Like having learned what I have learned. It's like, part of me is like, nope, power through, get to the end. Another part of me is like, yeah, but also. Like keep this on the back burner so I can look at it and be like, oh yeah, I did do that one that way, didn't I? But then just reset it. Like I don't want to get in the habit of that though. But, yeah. Because I feel like this is a problem we were, we always had, and it's just being annoying. Um, because this is actually in another scene, and I worry that the position information that it has here might actually be wrong anyways. Um, whoops. Wait, can I just... Does that work? No, okay. Dang. All right. We are going to actually print out what these positions are. Well, that's helpful, bastard. Oh, God. Twenty eighty nine. That's not twenty eighty nine. Don't you fucking lie to me, buddy. Yeah, so it is saving the location of the area that we're leaving it. 2089, and then we move it over here, and it's 8089. So that is working in regards of saving the information. It's just not working in regards to putting it there. Uh, uh, get in the habit of making sandboxes, temporary test projects where you work with a new API to learn it, absent of all your other code and potential mistakes. You just make a tween project, test and practice with tweens, without all your other possible bugs being present. You're saying it's bugged? What? What do you mean? I don't think it's bugged. I think it's working just fine. What the fuck? What kind of mean? What? It's really weird because the initial position did work. Like, it always went back to its initial position. That was grabbed correctly as a vector, too. And we are saving our current position. That's so weird. Like, everything I'm seeing here, this, like, I did not change this, and this is now messing up. Initial position is now yeeting him up into the corner when all I did was just like look at globals <laughs> huh yeah I might have to Gunny but I might have to later <laughs> right now it's it's kind of a thing of like if I isolate this and I play around with it it worked before it didn't work now but I've it's I don't know, it's a mild pain in the ass to set up a new thing, set up new uh, new images for shit and do all the core stuffs just to test one variable if that's why that's not working. And then that doesn't really solve the problem because clearly that variable is not working because something to do with me being in a different, a different scene compared to the thing. But it's probably more helpful for, for other stuff. It's not this exact issue that I'm having. Uh... Void pause, play set, reset, loop set, parallel, process mode, speed scale, set transition, stop, call back tweener. Oh my god. Sorry, just a little the fucking names of these things sometimes. Um. Oops, 
Okay, edit test, that's locations. Property vector two. Creates and appends a property tweener and tweener tweens a property of an object between an initial value and a final value. Spent an equal duration in seconds. The initial value by default is the property's value at the time of the tweening or the property value starts. It should. Yeah, so this is correct. It goes in 1 to 100, then 200. Okay, hold on. Hold this up so y'all see what I'm saying. Property tweener is where I am currently. So it. Yeah, it's like what we're trying to move, self. Uh, what the. Like, what its position is, which we actually just have position right now, it's fine. Then vector two and the coordinates, which we already have a vector two coordinate saved, unless the property of the global thing just being the coordinates is a problem. Do I have to save the coordinates? Do I have to make global be like vector two that it's like that seems kind of weird um like it should know it's a vector i guess yeah i'm seeing like you know scale is currently this so maybe yeah let's just try vector two position um so area zero new position would be vector two to is that going to work is that actually working well i didn't really work in that instance but i realized that i forgot to turn on the print See, it's still just giving me this. It's not saying vector two blank. So I feel like that's not fixing that one. Although it's not saying uh, something wrong. Fun, let's just try some of these. Call back tweener. Okay, so I believe that is saving it as a vector two position. It's just being a bit of a butt. All right, pulling back up the docs for tweens. Uh, use property tweener from. From current, the starting position will be overwritten by the given value instead. See how the property between us, see how tweening can be tweaked further. Yeah. Type the correct property name by hovering over the property inspector. You can also provide components and property directly with the same property component. Position X. Twice the position, different position transition types. Back to two, right! Like, what? Dang it. All right. Uh, let's see, now we have creature here. What is and your position is always going to be zero zeros, basically. So it's trying to change this thing's position to the new thing. It's trying to change it in relation to that. Or it is its position in relation to that. What the fuck? Again, I did not change initial position that should still be the position of they are what they are when 
I guess I don't, like, I guess I have previous position, position, but again, previous position we have set as the first number here. So it's like, okay, currently it's zero, zero, woo. But like when I move it, okay, now it's 2089. So that should move it back to 2089, but instead it moves it up to zero, zero. So it's not moving it to previous position at all. Like, come on, let's just do global dot previous position. I guess I just had previous position as just a fucking thing. Okay, well, I fixed that one. I, I fixed that one. <laughs> We don't need we don't need that anymore. We have a global information of what the previous position was, uh, but now we have to get the new pos new position. It's over. Yeah. So if global dot creature, like if it's estimation point, that means if it's a zero, which only does this. But our global creature is actually. Yeah, no, we actually do want that to be an estimation point because that means that if it's a zero, then we can put it there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, well, we don't have the script for all of them yet, but you know, oh my god. Oh my god. We don't need these, do we? Make sure that's not going to crash something. Wow. Wow. And this one is area two. Area three. four that's five sorry oh, yep nope that was five not six zay zay learn to count zay Digits, yay. I think I can right click to add a script in there. I believe there's even a shortcut to make a script, but duh. No comprendo. Whoop, 13. Nope, not just a random three. 13. Fourteen. Daytime! 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 Mm -hmm. Almost done! Just for copying that, and I can just. Yep. Let me just do 21. 22.
There we go. Theoretically. Well, that's not quite working. It's always sending us back to the first two positions. Fuck. Oh, because I never hooked these up. God damn it, I did it again. Input event, area two, fucking connect. I really wish that I knew an easier way to do this. Um, area six connecting from area seven. Universe is one solution for input handling. Yeah, I know. I know there's an easier way of doing this. But I'm gonna do it the dirty way and get something that works, maybe. I do this 25 times, easy. I can just feel that game jam just just this is just game jam energy now <laughs> 17 18 19 20 21. Thank you. Is a jam in my game? You're telling me a shrimp fried this rice? <gasps> wow! Now we just have to make it so it updates its fucking array whenever we move something. But we're getting there. All right, back to main. A shrimp fried this jam. Oh no. Okay. Now, this did not trigger move creature because let's prove that. Print move creature and then we go to global and oops and, oh. shrimp aren't known to be good at cooking you are correct oh no it did actually move the creature it did uh, tell us that it moved the creature but its array is still set up wonky. Array, the first location in the array should not have that anymore. Uh, global name, okay. So grid array equals global.creature. Global dot creature. Well, right now it equals a zero, so we have to have it update the global dot creature whenever a creature is put into a location, which is done here. Whenever we move a creature, I guess whenever we pick up a creature, it should change its current, uh, uh the current one that it was at to a zero. Well, no. Don't have to. 
what point do we want to change it from a zero to a one? I guess when we let go over a zero, we want it to be able to Riot. go to a one. Riot! 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 Join the riot, y'all. Do the riot. Do a riot. Hi, Dakota. I'm losing my brain. Hope you're well. And there's a raid for 5k mass is doing. Wow. All right. Um, so whenever we let go over a location, it triggers move creature and move creature updates thing. But before that, we want, uh, so we want to update the previous area to say it was a blank. Well, how do I get the current area? How do I get the area that we were at? I guess whenever I hover over a thing, I could have it say like, hey, yo, you hovered over me, bitch? Well, fucking update your previous area. Global area equals a one. But we need to know where I came from. So that's when I click on a location, it needs to save the area we're currently hovering over, but when I click on a thing, it's over saved on the other thing. Let's have just released. I guess if clicked, then it saves previous area. That actually might work. Yeah, hold on. If er, input is... I, I, can I see what's under here? Action just pressed. Is action just pressed click uh sets global dot prev area equals zero <laughs> why is this not valid Input's not declared in the previous... Oh, capital I. Capital I. Capital I. Alright, so what I missed in chat. Uh, cool for getting a length of fence replaced. Damn near laughed at the lady's fence. 6k... Oh my... What the fuck? Like, my neighbors are looking to get, uh... Like, a privacy fence put up between our properties. And that's like... 4k, and that's for the entire length, and it's a privacy fence. And like, good quality, too. It's like... That makes sense. They're, they have to tear out a chain link and then put in a, a full board privacy fence. It's like, I understand that one. Like, what type of fence were they looking to put in? Holy heck. All right, uh, shit, what was I doing? Um, so this is... No, this would be previous area equals one. Oh my god, do I really have to fucking... I have to do this in all of this. I am going to scream. Oh, it's area two. God dang it. Oh boy. Let's just see if this works on the first three. Privacy one? It's like privacy fences can get kind of expensive. I mean, I don't think 6K for the length of fence between two yards is reasonable. They're the top tier company in the area. Listen, if your neighbor wants it, uh, they can pay for it. It's like, like, if my neighbor didn't know, uh, was it? If my neighbor, like, you know, I didn't know them and I wasn't interested in a privacy fence between us as well, I'd be like, y'all can pay for it. I don't care if there's a chain link between us, but I also want a privacy fence around my yard eventually. So like, yeah, sure. I'll go have these on, on that side just so you can, just so we can split that one. It's like, fuck yeah. 
probably reach out to him soon so we can try and get that figured out. Alright, um, shit. So, now we know what the previous area is, we know what the current area that this is. Fuck then harpooned! Fine, you joined in literally seconds too late. Too bad. 10k on the Mantis Raid, though! Pretty fucking crazy. You know, 6k is not worth it for fucking fence. <laughs> and you immediately lived as well! Wow, uh, about half of you lived. There you go. GG, y'all. Paid off! Yeah, you made so much out of that. Main up creature, print creature. We don't have to have this anymore. And this sets grid array global area equals. Okay, so that's the area in global. So it looks for this one and it replaces it with the creature, which is fine right now. We actually. I guess, yeah, we have to still update that one, but that's fine. Um, okay, and if global creatures, that, what am I trying to do? So we need to set the previous one's value to a zero. Grid array. Global dot prev area equals zero, because the only way we move something off a location is if the previous one went to a zero. That's a fence, but wants to go halves, but also has four adults in their house versus only me. Did they mention doing it ourselves? They did mention doing it ourselves to her, to her husband knows how? Sounds sketchy, but it was in 6k. I mean, yeah, kind of. Wow, that's actually fucking worked? Oh my god! I only have it on the first three, so if I do that, yeah, it's not going to remember that one. Well, let's keep saying fuck off, I'm full. But we'll deal with that one. Okay, so if the SSR my global creature is... A zero, it says, fuck off, I'm full. Which is not a zero. Then fuck off, I'm full. If it... Oh my gosh. Which, global creature is currently not being updated super well, I don't think. Creature, you know what? Actually, set variable global creature equals one for right now. Because whenever we are messing with the creature stuffs, we set, like, whenever we pick up creature one, we have to set the current creature we have. I click on it. Um, global. Whoop! Global dot creature equals one, because that is the creature that we have right now is global creature one. Actually, yeah, let's set this to zero, just for sense. Okay, now I have to add this line of code to literally all of all 25 of these again. Okay. Well, let's just let's, let's get started, everybody. Or... If I make this any more complicated, then I am literally just going to have to uh, replace, like, these numbers with, like, area name or something. And just have that be a variable stored in all of these. I like how I was like, I was so confident I made this work that I just copied it to all 25 of these and synced them up and everything, and then I literally immediately had to not do that. It's like literally immediately. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to set that as a 1 and then copy. Because then I can just do the 10th digit. I make this so easy on myself. Look at how easy I made this on myself. Fifteen. Uh, Sixteen. Seventeen. Fifteen. Nineteen. Twenty, which we copy the two first. Twenty. One, twenty two. Your sausage. I made noodles the other day by taking a like really like thick kielbasa, chopped it up, put it in a pan with some garlic and some olive oil, like cooked that down with some uh, pasta boiling on the side, and then just like. Just like, what is it? Oh my god, I actually like bought a can of uh, canned pasta because I wanted to see what the flavor profile of a uh, like this one type of spicy marinara that, that I've been seeing a lot is. And I just put that in there as well just to like cook a bit more and I finished the pasta in it and I just have so much of that left over. It's, I'm, I'm so happy. Okay, well these are all saying fuck off, I'm full. I have no cat. Oh yeah, duh. Ah, did that place the second one there? Aha! So there is definitely a bug happening here somewhere. Like, for one, I can place all of these on one spot. Oh, and I can just pick them all up. Well, I mean, that's some interesting gameplay mechanics. Note, it's saying I have no space when I have all of these open. So the array is not getting updated correctly. Okay. I'm going to put that in here. They're stackable. Well, it's a type of merging if you really think about it. Okay. So, Bruce area, area. What I think is happening here is it's in the movement step. Like it's, uh, so that's moving it around, but what we care about is like when I initially click on it. Set global creature to one, because that's what we're clicking on is a global creature. Uh, position is our current position from right now. Golden mouse position, that's fine. Dragging, it's true. Yep, so that means that we're currently dragging a thing around, which means we shouldn't be able to click anymore. Which is fine. But why is it that I can seemingly pick up a bunch more of these? Because I currently am holding click and I'm moving my cursor around over a thing? Yes. Um. And then, and global dot dragging. 
But yeah, only if we are currently dragging are we able to move things. Wait, no, that wouldn't work here, would it? Uh, it's also doing backwards sometimes with the array. I'm able, able to drag backwards. <laughs> Uh, that actually might be the problem we're having, is that the initial and final positions might just not be updating fast enough or something. It's like, so whenever we click on a thing, it sets the previous area to, like, wherever we are, which is fine, because we only click on a spot when we are picking up an item. That makes sense. If we just release the thing... If global creature... Oh. No, we only care about this creature. We don't care about the global creature. We only care about this creature. We... Yeah, no. We only care about the creature in here. If it's not a zero, then it says, fuck off, I'm full. Yeah, no. Oh, god damn it. This is getting such a pain in the ass. Okay. Because I have to now change this. Well, no. It only... We use the array now. We don't use creature. We don't have a global dot creature anymore. Oh, yeah, we do. That's right, the creature updates the array. So all this is doing is just updating the... Well, it's not really updating anything, honestly. Um, it's just defining that it has a variable called creature, but we only care about the global creature. This is just a hold when there's a creature in here, but we're kind of doing that in the array now. The array keeps track of if we have a zero for nothing in there versus all the other things in there. So, honestly, we could probably even just remove that entirely. It doesn't change anything right now. Um, hmm. Are we updating the array again? So, it's setting wherever our previous area was to a zero, which that seems to be working, honestly. It, not perfectly, obviously, but it, it's kind of working. Um, we just don't have a way for it to not drop off a thing if there's already a creature in there. That, that's, that's something we have to change in here. Like, if, if it's over, over an empty area, put it there. I guess if it's not zero, we can put it there, but I don't know why it's letting us put it in a spot that... Oh, because we're not using this correctly yet. We're not using this correctly at all. Huh. Global dot creature actually needs to be whatever that item is in the array. So that means main will have to... Oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna call this a stream. Uh, from what I'm seeing here, is uh, the array is far more important than I initially thought it was. Um, and that'll be fun. I have to have a lot of things call back to the array and tell the array to like, hey, what's the location here? What's going on with this spot? Is this a valid location? Is all this stuff okay? That is gonna be a lot of things for me to have to, to add in and figure out. Um, we don't have the merging thing done yet. Jesus, my brain is freaking fried. 
yeah, running on the ending scene. Putting up the ending scene. That that that's. Oh, Bon, you're gonna awa. How about Ayara? You you awa Ayara. <laughs> um, is there? I think I'm gonna call this one a stream here. My brain is freaking fried. I have no idea what my plans are for this next week. Uh, genuinely, I don't know what my plans are this weekend. I think I'm going to try and get another uh, uh, content warning video in or stream in. Uh, but I make no immediate promises. Uh, but yeah, this week has been a lot of fucking fun. So thank you all so much for joining me. Hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, a rest of your, you know, general week. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any more streams. Even though I never post schedule, I might as well just say I never, I'm not doing another stream. Uh, tomorrow, day after all that jazz. And I'll see you in the future! Good night! Goodbye! Farewell! So long!